Hi everyone. Today we'll be showing you how to change your oil like a pro. You'll be today you'll be seeing some of the tools and equipment that I use. Now your tools and equipment that you might need, like different size sockets or oil filter adapters, they will vary on different brands. So today we're doing it on a 2012 Toyota Matrix and I'll show you the tools that I use and the techniques that I use to be changing your oil. Now, I'm not going to show you all the different checks that I do. Today's video will just be focused on getting your vehicle up and draining and filling your oil. And to take some of that, if this is the first time you're doing it, probably hope take some of that anxiety or stress away from having to do it yourself. Okay, so this will be your drain bucket. I like to use one of these from Flow Tool. It's nice and big. It's got a deep lip, as you can see. The only problem is, is that if you have hot oil or a lot of oil, or you're on a big gradient, this lip can get pretty dicey, get pretty, my theory, if they made it a little deep, it would have been good. But what I did, you have to be very careful when doing this. It only comes with two holes. I drilled two extra holes and that really increases the flow, so I have never had an issue with it getting close to the top or overflowing. But when you do drill it, it's very soft plastic. So when you're pushing with your drill, or I've been doing it in a couple of stages, don't push too hard, otherwise you'll go through the bottom. Next up, I like to use a moving blanket. <laughs> there we go, it's all folded up now. I have two sides that are dirty and one side that's clean, and that's the side that I lay on. It's the clean side when it's folded all the way out. And what that does, if there is any drips or spills or sprays in small quantities, this prevents it from getting on asphalt and it makes sure that your working environment and the customer's driveway, if you're doing it for a customer or if it's most likely probably your own driveway, prevents any of those nasty stains. Now, if it's raining outside, I stick a plastic sheet underneath this. So this way it doesn't get soaking wet. Next up, you're going to need some brake clean. This helps clean up the bottom of your engine uh, for any oil spills. Also, if you did get a drip on your asphalt, you can lift, the, lift it, lift the oil up with some brake clean. And then you can soak up the rest with some towel. You're going to need towel anyways for the rest of the job. You know, cleaning up uh, the underneath of your engine, your oil drain bucket too. So. Some very important items to get of uh, equipment, and it's brake clean and shop towel. Now you can use shop rags, um, but I love these little rolls you can grab there, multiple use, chuck them away. Happy days. Now onto some of the nitty gritty. You're going to need some ratchets. I'll have a couple of snap-on ratchets here. As you can see, I've got a small, shallow 24 socket. You can buy these in a pack of five from multiple companies and that's so it can fit. This one's from Matco. And so you can fit, as I'm working on a Toyota today, it has a specialized oil filter cup. This one's from Blue Point. You can also get it from Nine Circle. I have the, uh, the six and eight cylinder cup from Nine Circle in the truck. And that one has a three eighths hole in it where this one doesn't. It needs a 24 socket. So. This is what I'll be using to take off the oil filter. Again, you'll need a, an adapter for Toyotas. Other different brands will vary. So if you're using a, a standard oil filter with a metal, metal oil filter, I'll show you my favorite tool I use to get those off. This is the tool that I use for removing metal oil filters or so not the cartridge style that I just showed you. I've had this tool now. A lot of people have lots of other different tools, other oil filter bands. This one's actually made by Fram. So they're probably just a rebrand. But I've been using this one now for about seven and a bit years. I've been using this particular one and this is the only tool I've been using for metal oil filters. And it grips when you turn it and it kind of digs into the metal casing. And then it 
turns. And if the oil filter is smaller than this, which is quite common on Hondas and stuff, you can just grab it around the outside a little bit just to help it start get going. And then once it starts turning, it'll grip itself. And to be honest, I haven't run into a job where this, car, this hasn't been able to do. Sometimes it gets a little jammed up, but there we go. It's seen a lot of use and I recommend these highly. And then I'll also use another 3 8 ratchet by Snap-on. You don't obviously have to use Snap-on, this is just the equipment that I have. With either a 13 or 14 mil socket. I like to use a couple of ratchets whilst doing my oil changes. And I'll use this one for removing the drain plug. Here are the ramps that I'll be using today. These ones are 16,000 pound. They say motor master, but when I did my research to replace my previous set of ramps, because yes, you use ramps on a commercial scale, like I do, I figured out you can actually wear them out. So I picked up a set of these. They're manufactured by a company in the States, I believe, or there's a company in the States that do sell them. And they're two piece, obviously up in, in Canada, they were rebranded and they're sold at Canadian Tire. So they have a decent amount of lift while having a long ramp. So if you've seen one of my previous videos where I walked you through my tool truck, I mentioned that in the winter time, if you're using a short, steep set of ramps, you, you will struggle to get a vehicle lifted up those ramps. The ramps will skid around. You might drop your vehicle, get ramp stuck, who knows? So with these ramps, they're nice and wide. They have a very long gradient and they have a high amount of lift, higher than a lot of them that I've seen. So that way you can get your vehicle nice and high off the ground. You don't run the risk of driving your vehicle off the ramps, especially if you're doing this out in the winter, like I do. So these are the ramps that so far have been my favorite. Okay, so now we're gonna start the oil change. Right now the vehicle is all the way on the driveway. I haven't lifted it up on ramps yet. I like to check the oil before I get started as a good reference point. My oil is still at maximum from my previous oil change and I've done 8,000 kilometers. With fully synthetic, I always recommend every 8,000 kilometers or six months. It's very important if you want to have your engine last as long as possible to prevent carbon buildup and uh, deposits on your components of the engine. Now, I do do more checks than just that. Now, whilst you're on the driveway and the vehicle's up on ramps, when you fill your oil, well, you're looking at the specs of your vehicle. So this engine takes four liters of oil. Now, once it's on, up on ramps, if you put four liters of oil in it, you're gonna be around half percent, you know, 50% up your oil dipstick. And that's because the vehicle's at an angle. So you're draining more out of your oil pan. So I'll probably stick in around four and a half liters of oil. And that will count for the vehicle being on a driveway already, and then up on ramps, you're at an increased incline. So you're gonna use, you're gonna need a little bit more oil than what your manufacturer says that you need. And by doing that, I feel you get a little bit of more of a complete oil change because there's always a little bit of oil left. And especially if you're in a shop or you're doing it on complete level ground and the vehicle's 100% level, then you're going to use only what the manufacturer says. And there's always going to be a little bit left in the oil pan. Usually, you know, almost up to a litre in some cases. So you're going to you're going to need a little bit more oil. So if your manufacturer says you need five liters and you picked up a five liter jug, by the time all you're said and done, you're not gonna be at the maximum mark or your maximum operating line of your oil dipstick. Right, let's get this vehicle up on ramps and we'll drain the oil and replace the filter. Placing your ramps, try and get your wheels as central as possible. Make sure they're nice and square to your rear wheels, so that way when you're driving up, 
you don't wander off a ramp, especially if they're thinner than mine. Nice. Now that your vehicle is up on ramps, you're ready to begin your oil change. Take your oil fill cap. This will help your oil drain out a lot smoother and more complete. I take it, I take it off, I put it here. So you, if you forget, that you haven't, if you've walked away and you're distracted and you haven't put oil in it yet, you go to shut your hood, the cap's right here. Just don't, sl don't slam the hood because this will be smashed and you'll be stuck. But that's to help remind you that Oh, I haven't put oil in it yet. So once you, as soon as you put oil in it, cap goes straight back on. So we're going to do the drain now, and I pull the dipstick out as well, just a bit as a visual reminder. Hi there. We're now underneath the vehicle. As you can see, it's a little low on space, but safety glasses I always recommend as a must in case you've got any loose debris or rust coming from the bottom of your vehicle. These will save the day. I mean, they're not fully enclosed, but I've been using, I, I go through a set of these probably every year because they get scratched up. So hopefully we've got lots of lighting now. As you can see, this is, <laughs> this is the oil filter for the Toyota. And I've got the drain plug right here. Now, if the oil was hot, it will project further than anticipated. So I love these flow tool. Might not be flow tool actually, but it's a former funnel. So you can stick it up right here to stop oil projecting too far past your oil drain tub. Okay, so I'm gonna start with removing the oil filter from the oil filter housing. It is a cartridge style filter, so I'm going to be using, as I'm working on a Toyota today, I'll be using the oil filter housing cup adapter. It has these slots here. The oil cup, if you're working on a Toyota, it'll have three slots on one side and one on the other. So, in a 180 degree opposite direction. So let's stick that on there. It's nice and flush, make sure it's nice, nice and formally fitted. Make sure your ratchet's in the off position. All right, I'll just move this out for, for a second. There we go. I could turn that out by hand, but after years of wrenching, I've got a bit of carpal. I've been struggling with carpal tunnel for many years. I should get that looked at, but time is money. There we go. So I can take this off. I will need this again for retightening the oil filter. And when you're retightening, be careful. These housings are susceptible to wear and tear. There we go. Look at that. I'll let this drain for a bit. And I'll replace that before proceeding with the rest. Be careful of wind, because that will make your day bad. Well, another thing that helps with wind is the former funnel. It can act as a little block for the wind. Look at that. Oil's still pretty good in colour. I do do this oil change every 8,000 kilometres. I never follow the manufacturer recommendation because they want to make your vehicle look as cheap to own as possible on paper. So some manufacturers go 15,000 or one year 
something like 10, especially with the long life oils as well. You've got to watch for the aftermarket oil. Some say they're good for 10,000 uh, miles, which I know up here in Canada, we're in kilometers. I'd have to do some maths for that. Um, don't ever follow it. If you want your vehicle to last, don't ever follow those. Never, ever, ever. And as a mechanic and as self-employed, it's an oil change is a loss leader. I mean, I know oil changes are creeping up there in price nowadays because everything's so expensive. So an oil change, unless you're going to a Luba Goober shop, which I don't recommend really. It's, you know, you're looking at almost a couple hundred dollars now for a, a decent oil change. And that's for, I use Wix oil filters and they make oil filters for OEM manufacturers. And I use Total Oil as well. I only use mineral or semi-synthetics upon request. I just standardly quote out fully synthetic because they're the best technology out there. Now, there we go. I'll just grab a screwdriver and change this paper oil filter inside this kind of just it just came out by itself i'll grab a pick so i can take off the oil ring back under we are here's my replacement oil filter it is wix 57064 and that's for this 1.8 toyota engine I'll also take this oil filter and dispose of it all my oil filters are sent to a, a recycler so, but a uh, lot of local municipalities will collect these once or twice a year if you save them up. And you're probably looking at doing an oil change at least twice a year. So there's not that many, 10 litres of oil or more, depending on the make and model of your vehicle. Obviously some vehicles take a huge amount of oil. I have my bin pretty close. Let's get this. Can you see? Get this old ring off. Right. Put that in the bin. Let's unpackage this oil filter. What do we have in the baggie? A replacement O-ring for the oil filter housing and a new paper cartridge. Now, if you're wondering what's inside of a metal oil filter, it's pretty much the same thing as this, but they have a spring as well as an oil pipe bypass in case the oil filter gets blocked. Because I know some Hondas or some oil, Honda oil changes, I've heard from other technicians that on the base oil change, they just change the oil and not the filter. They wouldn't do that. And they change the oil filter every 16 or something like that. I, I, I would not do that at all. That's the biggest way to make your vehicle unreliable, is not doing real regular maintenance. So let's get this O-ring on. It's nice and coated with some oil. I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess in the areas that I don't want. And it's always important to have your O-ring coated with oil. This one's got oil left. Sometimes I take it from the inside of the cup and just rub it over. And then if you have a metal oil filter, I'll just take my, dip my finger in the fresh oil that I have for the vehicle and just give it a light coating. And it makes it easier for removal as well. Let's get the paper oil filter in there. And it's ready for reinstallation. I'll just give this a quick wipe so there's not oil past the O-ring section. Otherwise it'll make it look like there is a leak. Be careful not to cross thread it. So I go anti-clockwise first as a loosening direction to make sure it's nice and square. So you're not going to cross thread it and then you'll be easily be able to whip it in. 
and then once it starts getting tight so that's when you know you've reached the o-ring then you can go ahead and reinstall your adapter if required And then be careful not to over tighten it. I just like to give it a little squeeze. There. Yeah. Then we'll give it, and this is where you'll need brake clean. I like a lot of clean flow products. I do. Beautiful. Perfect. Now, let's drain your oil. Let's get this into the recycling. I'm a big, I wouldn't say I'm a big green person, but I do like to recycle and do my part as much as possible. All my oil filters, they go for recycling and all my oil gets collected by a commercial collector. So for that, as a business, you have to be registered and all that malarkey. But if you're just doing this at a non-commercial scale, just doing this for yourself, then like I said, the local municipality should have my local municipality anyways. And then it was, uh, has collection date once a year, but they used to have it twice a year. So I like to use a 3.8 socket for this. I don't typically use wrenches because they have 12 points instead of six. And if you've got a really tight drain plug, then it won't round off with a six point. Now, as there's a little bit of wind today, I'm going to set this back up. Yep. Just perch it there in the direction that the oil will go. So if it hits early, and it wants to bounce, especially if it's hot, it's not gonna go past this, you might get, and that's why you have a moving blanket too. Protection. You wanna loosen this in a anti-clockwise, there goes my light again. Anti-clockwise direction. And then once it starts losing most of its oil, it's gonna start dripping back this way a little bit. So be prepared to move your oil pan. This is all nice and loose and whilst we're here we'll talk about it this a lot of oil filter drain plugs have a ceiling ring I do change this every single time I do an oil change Lots of oil shops do not and It is a crush washer Bloop. See I didn't need the former funnel today So we'll let that drain out Try and protect this from a wind a little bit so the wind is picking up today and now if it's you're doing it on a really windy day i like to put a ratchet strap on the hood and the between the, the hood latch on the top of the hood and the catch at the bottom and not do it tight to bend the hood prop but just enough so if the, if your the wind does catch your hood it's not gonna fly back and smash your windshield or damage your a pillars now you might have to your drain drain plug crush washer has been excessively crushed. The oil is going to get more affected. The windy, the less flow it has to the wind. It's a little bit windy under here. Oops. So I've just repositioned the tub there. So this. Is your crush washer and then it's on the drain plug let's see if i can just without puncturing my fingers sometimes if they're really been tight or reused you'll have to kind of leave them up lever them up in sections with a screwdriver and then use a pair of side cutters and cut it in a couple of places just to expand it enough so you can get it off the drain plug i carry around a selection just like that but you can Buy some off Amazon or your local parts store. I like the aluminium ones. You can get copper too. They can't. They work as well. Plastic ones don't ever use a plastic one. They just end up leaking. The oil and the temperature 
just makes them brittle. So this is my new fresh washer. Just like that. I'll just pop her in just like that. Now I'll use this rag to clean up my tub. I with some brake clean. Don't forget to tighten this drain plug up. Otherwise you don't have a bad day. It will, it will just come undone pretty easy. I just squeeze it up. You can use a torque wrench. I mean, I've been doing this for many years. Unless it's got a aluminium oil drain pan and an aluminium drain plug, then I always torque those to manufacture spec because otherwise you can crack the drain plug. There we go. And that's not going to go anywhere. Also another thing with the safety glasses. If you're spraying into the wind, you're not going to get brake cleaner in your eyes. And if you wear contacts, getting brake clean underneath your contacts, I know from experience, is not pleasant. It's not pleasant at all. I'll just get rid of this old one. And that wraps it up underneath here. I know it's extended because I like to jibber jabber. I'm a bit of a talker. But that wraps it up underneath the vehicle. So I'll cl clean this up ready for, because I, well the bin here, it's full of oil. So I like to clean that up with brake clean, put the cap back in the drain hole, and then I'll recycle this oil. I'll send it to my recycler anyways. It goes into my storage containers, and then once I've reached a certain amount, it gets sent away. And, don't forget your lights underneath your vehicle. Because lights aren't cheap. Decent ones anyways. So the next part, we will now fill the engine with oil. Happy days. Okay, so now we're all done underneath the vehicle. We're gonna start, we're gonna put some oil in the vehicle. I'm using another Floatool product. I'm not trying to promote or anything. I just, I like, I like some of their funnels that they do and some of their products that they have. So I'm just going to stick that there. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting in the manufactured recommended amount of oil, the four liters into the engine. I'll then close the cap, put the dipstick back in, I'll get it down off the ramp so I can then recheck and top up if required. So let's get this oil in the vehicle. Again, I'm using a total oil and it is a fully synthetic. go. Make sure there's no drips. I'll just put this funnel somewhere where it won't drip everywhere. And now that we have oil back in the engine and we want to recheck the oil level after it's cycled through the filter and the oil galleries, cap back on because if you do that this part without the cap on oil will start spraying everywhere and you don't you don't want that so here we go okay so now that the vehicle is back down on all fours we can let the engine sit for a couple of minutes or a minute to two minutes so let all the oil drop back down to the sump of the engine or the oil pan. Where I'm from, it's called the sump. We can then recheck our oil level and see if it needs any adjustment. 
which in this case it does. It needs about half a litre. It's here on the dipstick. I'm not sure if you can see it. And like I said earlier in the video, that because of the vehicles, I mean, my driveway is at an incline, and then with the ramps, it's on an incline as well. That you will need an extra half litre of oil, typically. It's usually up to a half litre. Yeah. So I'll probably stick about 0.4 of a litre in. Let's take this oil cap back off again. We're sticking some extra oil in here. Let that drop down to the oil pan. It's getting a little windy now. It usually doesn't take too long unless you've got a choke, completely choked up head, which would be a diesel usually. It hasn't been maintained enough. There we go, yep, my oil level's now correct. Usually if you're having trouble viewing your dipstick, spray it with some brake clean, give it a fresh wipe, and then re-dip it. And that will give you a clear inclination or indication of where your oil level is. Because I know some of them can be fairly difficult to read. Yep. Perfect. Let's remember to put the oil cap back in place. And we're good to close the hood. And if you have oil stickers to apply, which I do, I stick one on the windshield indicating that it will be required replacement in six months or 8,000 kilometers. Okay, so if you enjoyed watching that, as much as I enjoyed creating this video, I'd love it if you smash that like button and you subscribe to the channel and I'd love to bring you more great content and hopefully today you've learned how to change your oil and your filter like a pro. Thank you.